Welcome to episode 197 of Podcateers. Our inaugural March mayhem has come to an end and we crowned our first winner. Congratulations to the Haunted Mansion for pulling off the victory. To everyone out there that helped vote the mansion through until the very end, we did it! Wow, that was a horrible Rocky impression and I kind of regretted it instantly. Um, (laughs) Anyhow, as we promised, we entered everyone that voted for the winning attraction into a giveaway and we announced the winner of our prize pack, Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Also, Black Panther keeps breaking records. It's kind of mind-blowing, actually. Uh, Also, would you sit through 31 straight hours of movies? AMC is doing that with the films from the MCU leading up to Infinity War. Plus, this cruise thing keeps coming up, and it keeps coming up, and now it looks like we may get a chance to watch Spider-Man climb up the side of a ship. I don't know. It might be cool. Finally, Bugsland is leaving to make room for more Marvel attractions at DCA, so we talk about what we'd like to see in that area. Remember, if you have any suggestions or comments about the things that we talk about in this episode, leave them in the blog post over at podcateers.com slash 197 or on Instagram or Facebook. This episode of Podcateers is brought to you with help from our podcast fairy godparents, FGP Squad! If you're new to the podcast, our fairy godparents are listeners just like you that help us out via Patreon monthly. And if you're interested in helping us out as well, you can become a part of the FGP squad for as little as $1 a month. But if you sign up for a contribution of at least $5 a month, you'll get the exclusive fairy godparent button as a thank you for your support. More information and a link to sign up can be found over at podcateers.com slash FGP. To all of our current fairy godparents, thank you as always for your support. Next time you think to yourself, man, I need to order this from Amazon. Consider first going to podcateers.com slash Amazon. On that page, you'll find a ridiculously large Amazon button that will take you to Amazon using our special referral link when you click on it, and anything that you buy during that trip may earn us a small commission from your purchase. It's another great way to support the podcast with a few extra clicks, and if you're already using our link to make your purchases, thank you very much for that contribution. If you want to find us online, we're on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Vero. Just search for Podcateers. Remember that Disney for Two also has their own YouTube channel, so make sure that you're subscribed to both of those. So make sure that after subscribing, you go and you hit that little bell notification icon so that you get alerts when new videos are posted. YouTube recently stated that being subscribed to a channel doesn't always get you alerts, that the little bell notification icon is the best way to be informed uh, when your favorite creators upload new videos. So make sure that you go to our channels and hit the little bell icons that way you're notified of new content also more information on each of us can be found over at podcateers.com team so all of our personal social links and all that good stuff is available there and that's it here we go it's time to jump into this episode here is episode 197 of podcateers This is our podcast. We're a group of friends that loves Disney, technology, art, food, and more. This is Podcateers. So, uh, speaking of who goes first, second, or third, can we just talk about who got first in March Mayhem this year, guys? Yeah, uh, <laughs> me pirates yeah. went yeah. down with the tide. Let's just go. Out let's just gate. go straight into the episode. <laughs> Out the we don't gate. need to talk about that. Uh, we have to talk about it, VJ, because it was a big portion of the last couple of weeks. So first of all, I do want to start off by saying thank you to everybody that participated yes. in March Mayhem. It was amazing just to see how many people were interacting and voting on the Instagram posts. I don't have an exact count yet, but uh, I went in and we had over 1,500 votes total. Wow. uh, From what I could tell. And when we finally got down to the final matchup between Haunted Mansion and Space Mountain, the last four hours (laughs) were 
some of the most intense <laughs> nail biting <laughs> moments of my life. Nerve wracking. Because <laughs> it was. Yeah, you were telling me. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> and because. I mean, I think we all had our favorites going into this, right? Like Gavin had pirates, Melissa. I mean, you had kind of pirates, kind of mansion. I think you were kind of just like New Orleans Square representation. But me, yeah, no, but... I had Indy. Oh, that's so right. You had yeah. Indy. That's right. You yeah, had Indy. Indy was her big pick. Yeah, and Indy that's went true. against Mansion, so that was hard. Yeah, that, that was, was hard. hard. And then we I beat voted it for Indy. And then. and then disney for two wanted space mountain to win and so i think at one point we all faced each other right in some capacity or another but when it Mm -hmm. got down to mansion and space i just thought to myself we are two votes away from possibly losing this thing to space mountain and so I go on my Instagram story and I'm all like, guys, Haunted Mansion fans, go vote for this. We have to win. And all of a sudden I start seeing a few more votes stack up for the Haunted Mansion, right? And so I thought, yes, nine vote lead. Here we go. And I check 15 minutes later and then we have a three vote lead again. I was like, Whoa. wait a second. Uh, like yeah. everybody started coming out in the last two hours and they really started hardcore voting for both attractions. Mm-hmm. And by the end, uh, I had posted it, you know, it was going from noon until noon the next day. And I had right at noon, Melissa's like, oh, my God, yes, Mansion won. I was like, uh, <laughs> not yet. It still has a few more minutes. I posted it a little late yesterday because I, I honestly I wanted it to run its course. Right. Because we didn't know right. if space was just going to take those last three or four votes in the last few minutes uh thankfully for me it didn't (laughs) but yeah it was nerve-wracking man yeah we even posted like i'll throw in some extra prizes (laughs) if you start voting for space no bribing and look i I don't (laughs) hey it's not a bribe bribing hazen's over here like doing subliminal messages (laughs) with subliminal messages (laughs) i'm just the only vote for mansion oh i guess we have to vote for mansion that is not (laughs) subliminal messaging okay that was was me for hattie (laughs) it was look that was me trying to celebrate Hatbox Ghost Day early this year Mm -hmm. by giving the win to the Haunted Mansion. (laughs) Hatbox Ghost Day, by the way, is coming up in a couple of months. Be ready for that in May. That's right. May 9th. Mark your calendars. (laughs) (laughs) But when I saw that, I thought to myself, man, I should have promised some, like, free mansion stuff, too. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, in in the semifinals round, when Pirates was matching up with Space Mountain, I did some extra post and i was like come on guys let's 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 shoot our cannons let's beat space mountain and pirates actually got further behind so i'm a total fan oh. <laughs> Backfire. if, if it makes you feel any better i actually like those posts and i don't know if you posted it in your instagram account but i remember when it was getting close to the end i think you texted us all a picture of a kraken yeah just taking down a pirate <laughs> ship, ship oh, apart. Yeah. And all I thought was like, oh, buddy, oh. <laughs> Destruction. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it was uh, an amazing time just seeing the matchup. So, again, thank you to everybody that participated. As you guys know, we promised that everyone that voted for the winning attraction was going to be entered into a giveaway. And we have a small little Haunted Mansion prize pack that we're going to be giving away later on in the episode. So make sure that you guys Mm -hmm. listen in. That way you guys know exactly what uh, we're giving away and who the winner is going to be uh, as a thank you for everybody voting. I feel like we're watching the news. (laughs) (laughs) And the winner is... It's called a hook. (laughs) Coming up at the 11 p.m. news. After this after weather, we'll name the winner. (laughs) Now back to you. Dallas reigns with the weather. Yeah, I mean, you got to incorporate it, right? It's called a hook. So, yeah. all right. Uh, can we talk a little bit about Black Panther again, guys? I know some people are tired of listening uh, nope. to us talk about Keep Black going. Panther, <laughs> but Black Panther is an absolute <laughs> runaway success. And as of this last week, it is now the top grossing superhero movie in U.S. history. <laughs> How about <laughs> that? That's awesome. So, congratulations, well Black Billion Panther dollar kitty. And team. Dude, seriously, right? <laughs> so good. And, and this one... I, I can't. I can't. Oh, and man. he doesn't have fur either. <laughs> True. 
I, I don't like cats without fur. I think they just look freaky, by the way. But I'm okay with this one not having fur. It's all good. He's amazing. So, so you're not a fan of Mr. Bigglesworth then? Mm-mm. That was going to bring him up. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Oh, man. Yeah, so this last week, um, it passed the Avengers for fifth place in all domestic box office sales, uh, not accounting for inflation. And it's it's so insane to me that Black Panther only cost $200 million to make. Yeah. And is now, uh, it's one of the seven, it's one of the only seven films to earn $600 million or more domestically. When are we going to see this again? Right? Like, it's beating its own franchise at the moment. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know that it beat Iron Man, and I understand. (laughs) And I will say, I'm okay with that. (laughs) Well, do we think Infinity War is definitely going to eclipse this? Do we we feel like it's going to be the next biggest one? Or do we feel like this has gotten so big that it's not going to be beaten? I I think um, Infinity War is going to take it. So? Um, only because of everyone who's going to be in it. I mean, everyone's going to want to see their favorite superhero. So I think it may, may do it. Um, we'll see. If not, that's still okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's crazy because it's going to take a film that has a culmination of 10 years of buildup to beat Black Panther. Black Panther is basically, in a lot of ways, a standalone film. You know, it kind of came on its own from the side and it just exploded into this phenomenon and that's super impressive and that it's going to take mm-hmm. this next like uh, group film to possibly overtake it i i'm totally impressed by it yeah you know we talked about this a little bit when we did the special fairy godparent episode that we posted on patreon uh, if you guys want to check that episode out uh, go to podcasters.com slash FGP. If you guys sign up to be a fairy godparent, you'll have direct access to that special episode. And, uh, you know, when we talked about it there, we talked a little bit about how in the time that we're in, like because of the current political and social climate that we're in, Black Panther hits a lot of chords in the right way where it's not really demeaning, but it's bringing things to light that – not a lot of people are comfortable bringing to light as clearly as Black Panther did, but it did it in a really classy way almost where they're not trying to offend anybody. They're just bringing these issues to light and saying, you know what, we need a solution. Mm-hmm. And in the in the film, the solution is obviously, you know, a superhero comic like solution to the problem. But it really brings in a lot of real world issues and it ties it in so beautifully that you don't feel like you're dealing with real world social issues. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like it, it does a good job of expressing the ideal of, you know, let's just make the world a better place. We have the power, we have the means, let's just do it instead of getting caught up in differences and bickering about policies and whatever. It does a great job of just cutting through all that crap and saying, wait, let's just make the world a better mm-hmm. place. We can do it. And that's what's great about it. That's that's what truly makes it transcendent for me. Plus, because of the fact that Killmonger was such a really well-written character, I think uh, it's mm-hmm. been one of the only villains in the MCU up until this point that's been really written in that form. The MCU, again, mm-hmm. we talked about this in the special episode, has been lacking villains until the purchase of Fox. So now I think we're going to see a little bit of a turn in that direction where we have more robust villains for the MCU. But you're right. I mean, the culmination in Infinity War has been in the making for 10 years, and they've relied a lot on personal and emotional issues within the Avengers group you know, to support the films. And Black Panther doesn't really do that. You know, there isn't one central character that every film is focused on. Black Panther is literally focused on the team dynamic and that everyone has an important role. Right. Agreed. The reason I was bringing up Black Panther is one, because of the fact that, I mean, that is an awesome milestone to hit, but also because it's going to be part of a 31-hour MCU marathon in two locations, which is just odd to me that 
AMC decided to only do this at two locations. They're going to be doing it in New York City at the AMC Empire 25 in Times Square and at the AMC Disney Springs 24 in Orlando. They had done something similar to this back in 2012 when Avengers was released. Obviously, much shorter marathon than it is now. Uh, first of all, <laughs> do you guys think you can sit through 31 hours of movies? Nope. Sure. Nope. nope. Easy. Can't do it. Nope. <laughs> I don't think so. No. I, I did way four, too much. No, and I can't do. That's the I issue. That's up. the that's the issue here. I think I, I'm surprised they're not releasing it in LA at some location somewhere around LA. But right. How many places could they really do this and expect to actually sell tickets to sit through 30 hours of movies? Very few people are actually going to be willing to do this. And the ones that are <laughs> will travel to New York or Orlando to do it. I just, I, I'm not surprised that it's not that many more locations. I thought maybe LA, maybe Chicago, but no, I wouldn't. I mean, there's probably not a single franchise out there that I would sit through 30 hours of in a theater. I just, I wouldn't do it. Melissa, didn't you do the Star Wars one? No, I did Indy. Oh. I did the Indy Marathon. How long was that? Went in in the morning, left at night. <laughs> That's all I remember. But we had breaks in between, so... um, By the fourth one, and I'm not really a fan of the fourth one, um, it was kind of like, okay, I'm done, but I'm going to sit it through just because I'm going to say I did it. Um, it was fun, but I don't know if I could do 31 hours. My butt would go numb. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> My mind would go numb. Yeah. That's a lot of artificial butter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Your heart would go numb after all that artificial yeah, butter. Man. AJ and VJ, do you guys think you guys can sit through this marathon, or when do you think uh, you would end up tapping out? I don't think I could sit that long. Even sitting at work is already, you know, like eight hours of that. I'm like, okay, get me out of here. Get me up. I need to stand up. Um, but I think part of it is it's just like, you know, when mm -hmm. Harry Potter came out or any really big movie, mm -hmm. when you go to and you you wait in the line and you wait till midnight, it's a whole experience. I think that's the appeal of this. It's an experience. And to say you did it and to do it with some friends, I think it's going to be I don't I mean, I don't know if it's going to sell out, but I think it's maybe I feel like it's going to be popular. I would do it if I had that many hours to spare like it seems cool to just watch them all together well here's here's the thing for me it's aj kind of touched on it when star wars or harry potter or any big movie comes out there's people that wait two days before the movie comes out and they're sitting out yeah. there so what's the difference this is only 31 hours that's nothing for these guys you know even for 24 hour disney days there are people that camp out <laughs> way before i'm like you know it's you have 24 hours. You don't have to be the first person to be in the park. Same with D23 and all that. There's so many people that will do it. I'm surprised there's not more theaters doing it. I don't know if it's because Marvel's throwing it or if it's Disney or if AMC, but I'm sure there has to be other theaters that are willing to do it. It's just not an official one like Orlando or New York. But I, I think people could do it. I mean, if there's going to be breaks or there's going to be movies where, okay, I'll... I'll stretch out and go get something to eat f during Thor. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Ouch, no offense, Gavin, again. But, <laughs> you know, like, or I was just watching Iron Man 1, and I was like, oh, okay, I kind of remember this part, but I didn't have to feel like I had to watch every single minute, you know? So, and I think it's just until the building of Infinity War. So as long as you're in the building, and I think the atmosphere would be really cool. Yeah. Just because all these comic nerds are together and fans and, you know, like, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of cosplayers, you know, and I'm not going <laughs> to, I'd be like, hey, Loki, can you take off your helmet, please? <laughs> Trying to see the screen, you know, but, <laughs> but I, I think it'd be a cool experience. And I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people could do it. It's just because you're thinking 31 hours in a seat when people camp out all the time and that's concrete floors, but you know, move. and in the wind and in the cold and. <laughs> You know, yeah, but you can still stretch out. It doesn't mean you have to watch the credits. You could still go in and out of during yeah. those sections, right? Actually, 
and like you got. I, I don't remember seeing credits. It just I went straight into the movie. I think it goes right into I the think, movie. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I don't remember. Wait, seeing what about all the mid the credit end. and end credit scenes? Yeah, well, have to show yeah, they that. have the Easter eggs. And not everybody worked on the exact same movie, so... That's, like, the whole point of watching Marvel movies. They're going to, like, do a Netflix binge where the title card comes out and it just goes three seconds until the next video. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Last man. on Riverdale. <laughs> See, my fear would be the whole point of this is to eventually watch the Infinity War movie. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, hour 29 comes around and you're going to be so groggy and bleary-eyed and out of it. At least I would. That I would, I mean, that last movie, which is the whole point of it, seems to be, would be ruined for me. I, but I just can't see this as being, I get it. It gets you nerd points and you can <laughs> check that off your nerd bucket list and you can have bragging rights over people. I'm in the Guinness But that's not World enough World for record. me because I'm in it for the movie experience and I want to really see the movie. And I don't feel like I would get that experience if I had watched 31 hours of other movies right before i watched right. it but you know, you know red what? bull red bull is going to be a major sponsor for this <laughs> oh, yeah. you know these guys yeah. are going to be like or i have my 24 something. pack red bull in my cooler right now i'm watching every single thing i'm taking notes <laughs> is that what they sound like <laughs> yeah so, oh did you see that Easter egg? <laughs> <laughs> so i like how you mentioned how you know once you get to the movie and everyone's going to be pumped and excited to see it right mm -hmm. so let's go back to the camping part to those who've done 24-hour days at disney this is the only way i could describe it gosh and i know people are gonna be like okay shut up about paint the night no i'm sorry but when i got to see it <laughs> sorry, for the first time it was after 44 hours of being awake it woke me up what oh, my yeah gosh yeah we were yeah. there yeah. we were there for the first one and we totally with that energy in the 44 room hours? It, it woke you up so yeah, that you, could happen at the theaters yeah with that when infinity war finally starts you know everybody's right. gonna Everyone's have gonna be awake their <laughs> sixth wind is yeah. gonna kick in and they're just gonna be like yeah ready i agree yeah it's difficult to sit through that many films i think gavin's right when he says people are just gonna check it off from their nerd points and bucket <laughs> list. I think that's beautifully said. Uh, ironically, they are missing a couple of the big films that lead up to Infinity War. They're not going to be showing Captain America Winter Soldier or Thor Ragnarok. And oh, they're not? No, they're not going to be a part of it. And I thought, huh. yeah, I thought that was that an interesting no choice. It, it could just be a time restraint thing because it starts with Iron Man at like 1.30 p.m. on April 25th and it ends with Infinity War at 6 p.m. on April 26th. And I think as far as when the show times are happening, it is – that's like a Wednesday-Thursday transition. So most people are going to have tickets to watch Infinity War at 7 p.m. So those people will have the bragging rights of seeing it a whole hour earlier than the people that just pre-ordered tickets to go. I know it, that's part of the nerdy so side. So they get double bragging rights? They get rights? double bragging rights. That's right. Boom. Yeah. I almost want to just go to just prove all these people wrong. Well, I don't. <laughs> Jeez. I don't think I need to go anywhere. Sleep for a day in a theater. Gavin yeah. is gonna have That's that sleep mask where. <laughs> yeah, just. It looks like your eyes are open. Headphones. With the eyes are open. <laughs> <laughs> just so I can have that ticket stub. That's true. That would be a cool I ticket stub to have. Remember when? They have the. Well, they have. And that's why they do it. <laughs> but they're also getting like like commemorative items for being there mm -hmm. like what i don't Gavin? know they didn't list them. like what <laughs> they didn't list what I'm they were sure. but they There's talked about something. commemorative giveaways let's go so that's pretty cool. meeting like, if it's lunch with robert downey Jr. oh i'm there yes please <laughs> yeah let's do it <laughs> if it's, yes, if it's a workout with chris hemsworth i'm there <laughs> Let's what do time it. Is our flights? <laughs> Wait, so how how much is one or this ticket? Yeah. To watch all these movies. Oh man, good question. I wonder if I could find the oh. cost of it. Well, talk amongst yourselves, children. I'm gonna find this on the interwebs. <laughs> Probably the price of a plane ticket to go to New York. I don't know. I, that's they crazy. can't charge per movie because if that's a that's the case, I'll just use my movie pass. <laughs> I could watch every I single one. How much I paid. They're like, oh, sorry, sir. It's only one movie per day. Thank you very much. That's funny. <laughs> I want to say I paid like 30 For indie? I want to say I want to pay 30 Yeah. But I got a um, poster out of it, and 
I forgot what else. Oh, and bragging a lanyard rights. with it. Yeah, you got bragging rights. <laughs> I You're did. like, I got a poster and bragging rights. Whoa, Boom. Wait, I won't open it. wait a second. <laughs> a lanyard? Whoa. <laughs> hey. Hey. Because this has to be in a theater that I would assume has reserved seating, and it would be awesome if it had the reclining leather chairs. Yeah. Right? Well, if it's at AMC at it Down. Bar. If it's it at AMC in <laughs> Disney it. Springs, <laughs> is it at the fork in the screen? What is it called? Yeah. Is that the fork and screen? Where you could eat and watch the movie in a reclining chair? I would do it. That theater is dope, bring you by the way. Your food? Mm-hmm. Yes. And the food is actually really good there. Worth the money. <laughs> it is completely sold out, so I can't Told even you. find the, trick, the, wow. the ticket price for it. I knew it. You knew that was going to sell out. Did they only have it on one screen? I it looks like it up. is, yeah. They, Most likely. One screen. Oh. One screen only. Yeah, I wasn't able to find a price, but I'm sure that if we search the web hard enough, we could find what the ticket cost for that was. (laughs) Yeah, StubHub, exactly. You think somebody's selling their ticket for more money? Maybe. You never know. Ooh, we should find some scalpers and see what they're going (laughs) for. Seriously. But wait, so you said Civil War is not part of this movie. No, Civil War marathon. is a part of this movie. Oh, okay. It's it everything uh, up Winter to Spider-Man. Winter Soldier, oh, Winter yeah. Soldier. Winter Soldier okay. and no. Thor Ragnarok are not going to be a part of it. And hmm. Black Panther, right? No, Black Panther is a part of it. It's the last one right before Infinity War. So hmm. the, the films that they're going to be showing are Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, The Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, Civil War, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man Homecoming, Black Panther, and it culminates with Infinity War. I wonder if this is in 3D. Because Doctor no, Strange in 3D like is, is like... An acid trip. It's fun. <laughs> it was oh, fun. Guess, I, I actually just saying, watched that for the first time last night. <laughs> what did you think, hey, Gavin? I was sober. <laughs> it was PG. Awesome. Epic, right? So good. Yeah. I was surprised by it. I finally got a chance to see it, and I did, and... Wow. So now you understand what I'm talking about, about doing the whole like time circle thing in front Mm -hmm. of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We saw that on IMAX and I got a little dizzy. (laughs) I bet that's a lot of upside down. Yeah, (laughs) that's awesome. But it's worth it. But there's just so much to see. (laughs) There is. Yeah, I think I want to do the same thing. I just don't want to do it in a 31 hour sitting. I'm going to watch all of the films leading up to Infinity War right before I watch that one. The only one that I won't be able to watch at home is going to be Black Panther because with the release of Infinity War being pushed up to the end of April, Black Panther doesn't release on Blu-ray until May. So unless I watch everything at home, because I own all the other ones, I watch everything at home, watch Black Panther at the theater again, and then watch Infinity War at the theater. That might be the only way that I get a chance to see everything in order again. Mm -hmm. But again, not in one sitting. I'm going to need breaks. Uh, I value having feeling (laughs) in my legs, being able to move, (laughs) being able to go to the bathroom. (laughs) You know? (laughs) artificial popcorn in my face so one movie <laughs> one a movie a night coma. <laughs> one movie a night exactly i think yeah i think one movie a night would be okay i think if, if i time it correctly in some cases i might be able to watch like a couple a day right and in, in, in some cases but i mean some of them clock in at just about three hours a piece so i'll fit them in I'm going to find a way, but I'm going to fit them in because I'm going to go through the 10 years of the MCU so that I can fully enjoy Infinity War when I watch it. Because that's not a red box, my friends. <laughs> that is a uh, get myself to the movie theater and watch it just like Black Panther was for me. Speaking of Infinity Wars, have you seen the meet Marvel superheroes during during Marvel Day at sea? On a Disney Did you see cruise. This? I haven't seen the yeah. pictures of it. Yet. I heard about it, but I didn't see the pictures. Who was you there? Meet everybody. Everybody. Seriously. Buddy. Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Black what? Panther, Captain America, Spider Man, Thor. Which Name Black dropping. Widow? Kidding. Uh, Red Hair Black Widow. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even Hawkeye is going to be there. Eh. What? He's missing from all the promo <laughs> stuff. He's there? Is Hulk there? He, he's in the background. Groot is there. He's, he's there. Gamora's there. 
Uh, Star Lord is there. What? If wow. you haven't seen the video, just head over to pocketeers.com slash 197. And you see all the characters like interacting and they look like they are doing a little battle scene. Uh-huh. It's, it's kind of kind of cool. Wow. It's like dinner theater, but with the Avengers. <laughs> Hazen's totally into it. Dude, Doctor Strange looks wow. awesome. That's legit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boy. Oh, cool. Oh, oh my god. He's climbing. He's climbing the freaking oh. ship. Wow, Gamora looks amazing too. But Spider-Man is climbing. <laughs> He's climbing the ship. My bad. That's I awesome. thought Loki's there too. I thought Thor hit Captain America's shield. He did it. It was Loki. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching on my phone. This is Sorry cool. about that. <laughs> what had happened was. Well, Hazen. <laughs> Hazen? Hazen's <laughs> frozen. Hazen. Oh. Uh huh. <laughs> oh I'm not going to curse. You guys see his face. <laughs> I'm not going to curse. Oh, Lord. Oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's awesome <laughs> that is amazing i i need to go to there oh yeah words we all they need, need to, to do there. is they need to have disney flights from la to florida and the avengers have to be on the plane for a, an avengers flight mm-hmm. to get you there <gasps> and then you can go on the boat would you go on that flight it's Hazen? a 31 hour flight <laughs> 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 they just He's fly around until they can guys. play all the movies. <laughs> <laughs> you just watch them all in the air. <clears throat> so here's what we'll do. We'll go to the top of Stark Tower. We'll take the helicopter, <laughs> land on the Disney cruise ship. I don't know which one it's going to be on. Is it the Magic or which one is it on? Do you know? The because, Wonder. Uh, it's question. it's on the Wonder? No, I'm totally guessing. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't say <laughs> which one it's on. It just says, which one is the one that goes to the Bahamas? Or do they... Do they both go to the Bahamas? Oh, there's three. There are a couple that go. Hmm. Let's, well, actually, fact check. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I I felt like a little kid watching that. (laughs) Yeah, that was, um, so that was something special. So, Great job, Marvel. I am looking forward to that. I want that to come to California Adventure. How about if it does? Yes, I mean, who's to say it's not going to? You know what? If they were to replace Frozen at the Hyperion yes, with please. some kind of Marvel show like this one at at sea, I would be totally for it. You know, you already <laughs> have the Marvel Universe live production. Bring it into the theater at the Hyperion. Frozen isn't yes. going to fit there once all of that is Marvel land. Uh, and with all that projection technology they have in there now. Dude, oh, seriously. They do some awesome stuff. Right? I agree. Uh, I agree. It's just uh, it's so good. <laughs> <sighs> okay. That would be good. So we're going to take Gavin's idea and we're going to have a cruise, right? We're going to go? I thought that I, was think, yes. I think we have to at this point. I thought we were point. already going. <laughs> Yeah, duh. I, I have to meet Iron Man, and I, I just, please. <laughs> well, we only have until March of 2019, so. Ooh. Yeah. No. What? I can't we do can it do... that quickly. Yes, you, you can. Got just a make year. it happen. To go but on this I mean... cruise? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you have a whole year, though. Positive I think it's only thinking. for Marvel Day. Oh, I thought you meant like this year, March. I was like, that's almost over. Are we in 2019? No, it's 2019. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed 2019. that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. wait, what? I missed that part. We're not in 2019 yet. <laughs> What's going on? I was like, wait, what are you talking about? It's 2018, I totally missed bro. that part. <laughs> Are we talking to Gavin in the future again still? <laughs> <laughs> that Space is awesome. time continuum is not happy right now. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it sounds really similar to what they're doing with the Marvel Universe live shows that are kind of touring the country right now. And knowing a little bit about how those shows are put on, I know that, you know, we recently talked to Brian Crosby, who's the director of creative at Marvel Entertainment, 
uh, he's in charge of those shows like Marvel Universe Live and stuff like that. So I'm assuming that the ones on the cruises are also put on by him and his team. So what you're saying is we get VIP access? Is that what I'm saying? Um, no. No. <laughs> I don't think, press passes. I don't think that's how it well. works. <laughs> Sure, sure it does. What are they going to do? Kick you off the cruise? Yeah. <laughs> the I can't of the say ocean. who our contact is, but you know who you are. If you're listening and you can get us press passes to go see these, send me an email. I would love to go. And I'll take all these guys with me. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we got to move on because oh, I'm just going to – it's going to freak me out even more. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen What's... the video, just go check it out. It's on the website. It's on the podcast it's funny to me hazen won't go on an airplane but he'll go on a helicopter totally Not different to dude <laughs> helicopters and boats are both more dangerous than airplanes no buddy. that's not true <laughs> it that's, is no, i guarantee it. no i mean I i've seen it. movies i mean i've never the seen side adventure doesn't count i've never seen <laughs> snakes on a helicopter okay but there were snakes on a plane and I'm not for that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there you go. It is what it is. Uh, so, you know, we mentioned it right now, and I think it's a kind of a good transition to start talking about this, that the Disney Parks blog officially posted that we're losing Bugs Land, and we're getting some more Marvel at DCA. And some people are excited. Some people are not so excited about it. Uh, Melissa, let's start with you. On a scale of one to yes, please, how do you feel about the about us losing Bugs Land for more Marvel? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> she went straight bye, past Felicia. yes, please to bye. <laughs> There's so much potential in that space that isn't used. I mean, yeah, they're cute rides and whatnot, but come on, bring some life into that park, that little area. Just, I'm ready. Gavin, how do you feel about the change? I'm a little sad to lose. It's tough to be a bug because I I do like that attraction and I I enjoy it every time I go. But I understand that it's been there for a long time and we will still have it at the Animal Kingdom in Florida. So that being said, I'm fine. Like I don't spend time in Bugs Land when I'm there. Even as, as an infrequent visitor, it's not something that draws me in. So I think they can better use that space and make it a little more universal because right now it's basically only a little kid friendly space. And I think they can make something with superheroes that is appealing to little kids all the way up to adults. And so that that alone makes me think that they'll actually be able to utilize the space better and bring a new energy to DCA that it has never had before, which they've just kind of started with Guardians of the Galaxy. I think that really invigorated the park with a new type of energy, which surprised a lot of people because I think there was some skeptical feelings, you know, taking Mm -hmm. the Tower of Terror out and putting that in. But once they did and once it was such a success, I think that really speaks to the fact that they can really inject a superhero element into DCA and make it be awesome. So I'm really excited to see what they come up with. AJ and VJ, what about you guys? How excited or n- not excited are you about this happening? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. With, with five S's or four? Yes. I think that was seven. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Four A's to four A's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> VJ, what about you? I'm super excited for this. Cannot wait. You know, yeah. I half expected if AJ was using yes with seven S's, I half expected you to answer with bruh. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. bruh. <laughs> okay, bruh. fine. Let's Take two. Respond to Instagram stickers. <laughs> bruh. Bruh. Like Gavin was saying, like new life. Oh, wait, was that Gavin or Melissa? Yeah, both. Everyone, all together. Yeah. Yeah. New life. New life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. You know, even as a parent, I see Bugs Land a little bit differently, right? Because the kids like to go there, and Heimlich's choo-choo train is 
it doesn't seem like it is, but man, it's a good little take two minutes to get on the attraction and just kind of sit for 30 seconds and not do anything and enjoy the smell of cookies and watermelon and stuff. Mm -hmm. Flix Flyers, you know, we talked a little bit about this with the Pixar Pier episode mm -hmm. where it looks like Flix Flyers is going to get repurposed. And if that's the case, well, then you don't have to miss that attraction, right? The fact that the little ladybug bumper cars, what are those called? I keep forgetting the name of them. Francis, Francis. Uh, ladybug, ladybug boogie. Yes. So that we're going to be losing. And unless they move that over to Pixar Pier somehow, we are going to lose it. But it's not like one of those attractions where you're like, oh, my God, I have to go ride this, right? <laughs> you have other like vehicle attractions like that that are just more exciting. You can go to Cars Land and you can ride... Uh, Rollick and Roadsters, which I think is a much better form of that without the bumping around, right? The right. little water park that they have there, some people use it. I don't see, unless it's summertime, I don't see a lot of people using it. Uh, and it, it's not, I don't really ever see it as an area that's fully congested, right? You see a few families there because they have really young children. But this is going to sound a little mean, but isn't that what Fantasyland is for? <laughs> <laughs> like, right? yeah. i yeah, mean let's be way. honest the busiest part in bugs land is the bathrooms yeah i mean and, it's yeah. got a, and the churro cart <laughs> it's got a box great bathroom. bathroom there so mm -hmm. yes you're right it is and for people getting off of mission breakout it's a really great shortcut to get into cars land and you know to mm -hmm. get over to the pier uh i'm personally excited about this change i love the fact that they're going to be bringing back uh I'm, I'm hoping that they bring back some of the Marvel elements that we've had in the past, especially at Disneyland Park. You know, when we had Interventions open, one of my favorite things that they ended up doing there was the Hall of Iron Man, where they had all of the suits on display. And when they closed that down, I'm not ashamed to say it, I cried. Okay? <laughs> you? I cried oh, a little no. bit. I did. Because <laughs> that was Definitely. one of my favorite attractions. And so... Hopefully, they give that some new life over at California Adventure. We were talking a little bit about what we would like to see in that area. That's something I would certainly want to see. Gavin, let's start with you. If you could add one attraction to this new Marvel area, what would you add? Well, I had a lot of ideas, actually, which is surprising because I'm the non-superhero guy here. Uh, but, you know kind of launching off of the success of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, I see a lot of potential in the superhero genre and attractions. So I started to think about uh, my three favorite superheroes from uh, the MCU. And so I've got a couple honorable mentions, which are kind of ideas that I kind of toyed with, but I'm not, I'm not fully sold on yet. So I thought of having a Hulk attraction and I thought of making it some sort of a, a game type attraction like Midway Mania or Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, except it's kind of a Hulk smash game <gasps> where you ride around through scenes and you smash, like you bang your fists on something in front of you and then giant Hulk fists like reach out and smash things <laughs> in front of you. I don't know, kind of a Wreck-It Ralph kind of a scenario, I guess. But I couldn't really come up with anything that would work for that. And then I thought of like a Thor ride where it was kind of like star tours and you know how between the scenes you you enter hyperspace and it like rears back and you fly through space really fast mm -hmm. i thought of some sort of a simulator where maybe everybody had a, a hammer in front of them and everybody would it'd be like everybody grab your hammer and as soon as you grab the hammer like you'd be thrown forward into some new realm you'd go to asgard or you go to somewhere else and i thought that could be cool but really where I landed is just kind of what I'm really hyped up about right now, which is Black Panther. And I would love to have a Black Panther attraction that kind of keys in on, to me, what were visually and musically the amazing things about that movie. And I thought about having uh, some sort of an aerial tour almost of Wakanda. And basically, you know, like kind of a flyover of, a la of an African landscape. And then at some point you go through that veil, that shroud, that hologram, you know, shield or whatever it is. And you enter Wakanda and you, 
you soar through all those cityscapes and you and you know maybe there's an adventure involved i don't know but i thought that would be really cool and you can make it really kinetic by adding other elements you know especially those incredibly amazing beats from the soundtrack and you know i kind of thought about you know in captain eo how when it would play those beats of the music the whole theater would like thump and shake you know it, so imagine kind of like soaring but with 3d projections and then it's actually bumping to that music so really kinetic stuff as you're flying through wakanda uh, I think that would be incredible. And I think they could they could find some sort of a story to tell, like, you know, we're racing back to warn them about something or, you know, we're we're flying in to I don't know. There, there could be a million ideas for the story. But to me, just capturing those visuals from that movie and incorporating that music, having a, a hip hop beat to an attraction at Disney would be totally unique and would be unique to at really any attraction that I'm aware of, you know, even outside of Disney. I don't know of any attractions that do that. So I think they could really kind of create something that's truly unique by bringing that music into it. Um, so that was the idea that I came up with. I'm, I'm really hyped on Black Panther right now, and I would love to see them create something centered around that. Yeah, the attraction, I think would you you mentioned soren but i feel like it's a little bit more flight of passage you know i think the ride system is more flight of passage the way that you're describing Mm -hmm. it and i think it would be uh, a really cool addition especially like you're mentioning with the music there is nothing like that at any disney park right now Uh, so yeah i really like that idea that sounds pretty awesome uh aj or vj what about you guys I think uh, Gavin took it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard f- for me. It's hard to imagine something either roller coaster based or something that's not going to be three D. Because I feel like with I'm going to say the other park, like Universal, they did a great job with their Spider Man attraction there, Love and that. then it's the same as it's the same kind of concept as Transformers. Mm-hmm. And I would hate for something to be. Like Disney would do something like it, you know, unless they're going to just trump it and, you know, like make it way better than the Universal ones. But the Universal ones are really great. That's that's why it's hard to like imagine a superhero attraction that wouldn't involve 3D. Like I don't and I don't want to be cheesy as Magic Mountain with Superman like, oh, let's just go up and you see Superman standing (laughs) and staring at you and you go back down and that's it. You know what I mean? So and it's it's kind of hard to imagine how big they're actually gonna make Marvel Land. That's what I know? was gonna say too. So I don't know if they're gonna take over that building that Gavin was talking about before, or if they're gonna extend past um, the Guardians or Collector's Tower and how far into Radiator Springs. Like I would love to see a Wakanda, a little bit of Wakanda in. Mm -hmm. Uh, like going to Radiator Springs, but I just don't know how that transition is going to be. The only thing I could imagine is how like Thor, um, because they always talk about the nine realms with Thor, right? Mm -hmm. And then I don't know how they would have like, say Wakanda to New York to whatever else uh, in the Marvel universe, unless they had like almost portals. So if you were walking through a portal that had like some cool effect, um, And you would go from Wakanda, say, to New York, or if there was Doctor Strange's, whatever that thing is, and he just teleports to different areas. So then it would, I could see the hard transition because you're going from one one dimension to another um, as far as lands. But yeah, I don't, I don't know as far as attractions. How would I'm I'm only thinking of like, oh, okay, um, the Iron Man experience at Hong Kong or um spider-man at universal like i can't think of anything other that would be as cool or cooler you know like gavin's already i'm like okay i want to grab the hammer already yeah. like <laughs> when can we go <laughs> i'm like but you can't lift the hammer right because it's not, it's not it's thor's hammer but um yeah i just i would just love to see all the different special effects that they're going to bring to this land that's what i'm excited for but if there's one attraction i think that would be cool is if you could like pretend like uh, be like spider-man and climb the walls somehow you know 
Mm. Like if they put a harness on you and you're actually climbing <gasps> the walls. I'm, yeah. I think it would be they're only going to, if they ever did do that, it would only be for kids 12 and under. Like the, what's the swinging, um, the swinging thing at Redwood Creek Challenge? Trail. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. what is that? Oh my God. I can't even think of it. The zip line that zip adults line, used yeah. to go oh. on, but then because adults were drinking, they said, nope, only kids 12 and under. So that'd be a cool experience oh. for a child to be able to climb up like a wall and then see Spider-Man at the very top and you get to talk to and hang out with him or something like that. That'd be kind of cool, but that'd be, that'd cool. be cool. The only thing is though, it wouldn't take a lot of guests. Right. Like it, but that's why I'm saying kids 12 and under. Yeah. Like it, I would love to do it, but I don't think it would be something for us to do. <laughs> so I can't I'm, think of any e-ticket just yet. Yeah. Mm. Whatever they come up with, I'm just super excited to have a new land at Disney California Adventure. And hopefully there'll be food. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really down for a new food place there, as I'm always saying on this (laughs) on this podcast. (laughs) Okay, so new food, new food. (laughs) So before we ask Melissa what her attraction would be, since you guys are such foodies, if you had to add a new like food location to Marvel Land what would you guys add? Falafels. <laughs> <laughs> if you got that joke, then yeah, you see. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what kind of food to add. I mean, only thing I would well, think of is just like Wakanda stuff. Themed, you could do themed ideas. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, web I think if they were to bring, <laughs> like, if they were to bring alcoholic beverages into that land, Thor's they could hammer. do like an IPA. And drop one of those like color changing lights into it and call it like Doctor Strange Brew. Mm. I don't know something mm. like that. Interesting. There you go. Well, they do have the Thor. Or they have Thor's hammer as a light up glow cube That's thing true. already. Yeah. They see, do. you can do lots of things like that. Yeah. What All they right. should bring is a like Electronica back <laughs> for oh, Marvel yes, Land. <laughs> Not All special again, really Marvel. Cool. What? Not if we're getting Marvel characters, I can tell you <laughs> Electronica's not coming back. No, not Electronica, something with Marvel. Like a Doctor something Strange like thing. <laughs> I can imagine Doctor Strange busting a move. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take that idea because my idea it's kind of a, a stretch with the, the MCU. But if we're gonna bring it's not back Superman, Marvel is it? Huh? It's not Superman, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I do not do DC. Uh-uh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I would love to see something with Baymax and Big Hero 6. Ooh. And I know this is going to, like, it's, yes, they had the meet and greet, but I would love to see the characters come out. Um, and I like how VJ was saying something with Electronica. Well, you know how they had the dancers, but why don't we have like Gogo, Wasabi, um, uh, Honey Lemon, uh, trying to think of everybody else, but I can't. But some, Fred. you know, the dancers dressed as them. Huh? Fred, their leader. Fred, Fred. there you go. Yes, <laughs> Lizard Man. <laughs> um, you know, something where they could bring a nighttime show, but they're part of it. And eventually you'll see Baymax and he'll come out or something with the meet and greet. Um, I really do miss Baymax. He had a short time at Disneyland. I don't think mm-hmm. he had a long, you know, he he deserved more time in Tomorrowland. Yeah. And I think he was robbed. So if they're going to bring Marvel, I would love to see Baymax come back in some way. Right. Uh, Big Hero 6 is a Marvel property. The thing mm-hmm. is that in the Marvel Universe... Big Hero 6 is so different than what we ended up getting as far as the animated version that Disney Animation put out. I loved it, by the way, but I don't make those calls. Bobby does, and I mean, unless I talk to him in the near future, he's kind of busy right now. I haven't talked to him in a while, but, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Just in case he's listening. Just just in case. I mean, you know, just throwing it out there. (laughs) Melissa wants Baymax back, so, you know, Bobby. Please. Um. But yeah, I would love to see Baymax back. He is a superhero. Uh, having him and Hero back, I think, would just be really fun. Uh, I think 
for me, I think kind of what VJ was talking about is is kind of where I kind of fell on this whole thing. I'm excited about what's coming, but the biggest issue that they have with Bugsland as a whole is that they don't have a large footprint to work with. And unless they're going to be taking over some of the parking area, like the cast member parking and stuff that's right behind Mission Breakout, we don't know exactly how big this land is going to be, right? So mm-hmm. what I was thinking was because we can't just make land out of nothing. Uh, I figured that going the 3D route might be the way to do this. And it's not unheard of, right? We've seen it with Star Tours, like these motion simulator rides, Iron Man experience when uh, uh, Galaxy's Edge opens. So it is a technology that Disney is already familiar with, but I would like to see them mix it in with some of the new technology that Imagineering has been working on. One of the ways that I think they can do it is not too long ago, there was a patent where they were talking about this revolutionary ride system. And we briefly mentioned this in an episode where there was like this swinging motion where in the patent, they talked more about Tarzan But really what I think they were bringing to the table was Spider-Man because it was right before Homecoming. And so you could get a Spider-Man attraction where you're flying around with Iron Spider, maybe bring Iron Man into it. And you kind of get that like Homecoming vibe out of it. But you're on this like new revolutionary ride system right now. I don't want to take that as my choice because it because of the patent, people might say, okay, well, you're cheating right like you may already know that that's coming so what i would like to see is and i'm going to base it a lot more on what we're seeing with pirates of the caribbean battle for the sunken treasure at shanghai even though that you're seeing animatronics and you're seeing these amazing sets as you're going through pirates You also have the experience of these projection screens in the background where you're seeing all these animations and stuff happen. And let's just base it in Stark Tower. You have Tony Stark or somebody that works for, like maybe Pepper Potts, right? Walking you in and the story is that uh, they just got Bruce Banner to start this internship program for Stark students. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna try to control the Hulk. Right, because they want to create more Hulk-like creatures for whatever reason, but they want to be able to control it. So they have all these brilliant minds like working together with Bruce Banner to do this. But something goes wrong. The gamma rays start shooting at everybody. One person on the attraction gets shot with gamma rays, kind of like they pick <laughs> out on Star Tours, like the 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 Rebel <laughs> Spy, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden the Hulk and this like rogue Hulk start bashing everything in Stark Tower. So now it becomes like kind of like the Transformers ride or like the Spider-Man ride in Orlando, right? It's, it is 3D based. It's very motion based. Iron Man comes in, Spider-Man comes in, whatever you want. You incorporate as many Avengers as you want incorporated into this attraction. And the idea would just be that you find a way to uh, pacify what's going on and everyone is happy at the end so i think using those technologies you can kind of build that type of attraction in that area it doesn't take a lot of space that's what i thought about uh and i think the entire area would benefit from making it stark expo i was thinking that too that'd be cool yeah i think it would be really cool because it leaves it open for just different attractions. Like let's say that in Stark Expo, we have a Wakanda exhibit, right? Where Shuri is leading this TED talk like seminar where she's talking about (laughs) Wakandan technology and what you can do and you get to demo all this stuff. And it's kind of like a walkthrough museum almost. Like I think that would be pretty cool. Kind of like interventions like, but better. And I think one of the cool things that they could have is I don't know if you've, if you've seen this, but have you ever seen those companies that will scan you 360 and they create like a 3D printed version of you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How awesome would it be is if part of Stark Expo, you can walk in, get 3D scanned, and you are 3D printed as your favorite Avenger. Ooh. So basically what they do at uh, Pandora <laughs> at cool. Point of Passage. Yeah. Is that what they do? They make Pandora? you. They make an avatar with your face. 
But do they 3D no print way. it? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they do a 3D scan. But do they print like 3D print an action figure for you? It's like um. I don't I know don't if it's know. 3D printed or if it's molded, but it's your face. Yeah, <gasps> that is as rad. an avatar. Okay, yeah, I did not you. know that. That is super cool. That is cool. Gotta go to Pandora. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took my idea from the fact that at Memento Mori, they can take your face and kind of like 3D shift oh. it, you know, into one of the ghosts in the portrait. But How? I figured if we have 3D technology, why not make a 3D print? I didn't know they did that in Pandora. That's Yeah, bring that tech over here and make yourself your favorite <laughs> Avenger. But then if you're wearing a mask, how do you get, you're like, look, I'm no. Iron Man. No, mm. what they would do is That's they me. would Those print it. Those are my it. eyes. I promise. No, no. <laughs> you can you take off the mask. Holding, yeah, you would be holding the mask oh. in your hand, and then it has your face with the rest of the gear on. Okay, okay. Just like That's if you're a Black Panther, the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, look, it's me, a Spider-Man. That just looks like Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> no, it's me, I swear. Uh, I paid $85 uh, for this. <laughs> it's me, you guys. Lame. You guys are lame. <laughs> well, how about if they did... Um, like an Avengers training with a kind of like the void where yeah. say, say you were going to, you know, you're, you're thinking of enlisting kind of like, um, what you call it? Um, Captain America, you know, he wanted to help and fight for his country. And then since infinity war, there's all these aliens trying to come in. So they're trying to build up a super army of, uh, Avengers, you know, in training. So then maybe they could do a 3d attraction like that where you actually could participate instead of just sitting in a uh you know something that's just moving you could shoot or something i don't know maybe you could have iron man's gloves or whatever his hands that have the blasters or you could have different everybody has different um say if there was a a, tr- a riot like system faces. that had six six uh seats <laughs> and each person had a different power so somebody could be web slinging somebody could have the iron man hands somebody could just have a hammer but you know maybe it's a scoring system too you know mm-hmm. something or you know how like um x-men um the animated series where they always had that training facility it was like a dome yeah kind of like mm-hmm. that maybe do something like that that'd be kind of cool that could be awesome yeah i think that would be really awesome too uh, i think the only problem with something like that would be making sure that you can get enough people through the attraction so that it doesn't become a burden you know, because well, if they Disney's... Make, make it big enough, you know? Yeah, I, I I think the second part of what you were talking about would be more, like, it would be a better idea because if you had, like, a uh, some kind of vehicle with six people and each one represented a different Avenger, I think that having a vehicle system would be the better way of doing it. But yeah. I would love that. Like, if each one of you had to work together somehow and each one had to do their part in order to proceed... That would be an awesome attraction, especially if the void was putting that together. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, if it was a ride system, but say there's six different rooms, then six different, you know, kind of like what you were saying, just <gasps> different storylines, you know? Oh, like Guardians. Mm-hmm. Six different yeah. versions of the attraction. <laughs> Depending on the room that you land in, it's kind of like Star Tours, right? You have one of several different ones that right. you can that you can get. Same thing with Guardians. Mm-hmm. That's the way to do it, dude. I'm yeah, kind of okay. like what Gavin was saying, like yeah. was touching up on what he was saying too. Because it's so hard to think of something that's not going to involve 3D because so many special effects are going to be involved. Mm-hmm. You know, at least that's what I'm thinking, and I don't I don't know all the different patents that are out there that they're testing right now so who knows they're gonna have something where you're wearing a total suit and <laughs> you're just like okay you're an avenger now there you go have fun. <laughs> dude if they did something with the void where like you're technically your favorite avenger like you know i could be iron man and one of you could be black panther and captain america and like you said you're training like uh so good i'm so on board with that <laughs> So on board with it. I'm going to talk to Bobby nice. about that one. <laughs> do Mental list? note. I do. That's the thing you have to talk to him about. Yeah, Google Docs right here. Send him an, uh, send him a Gmail. So with not... this whole land, are you thinking there's going to be no kid brides? Uh, I think what they're going to do is they are going to have just like the training academy like they have now. And they're going to have the meet and greets as far as like 
children's attractions. But I, I really think that because Pixar Pier is going to bring so much of that child-friendly aspect to California Adventure, I think this is more for that like tween to adult demographic. That That's me personally. That's what I think they're going to be focusing on. I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, like, like Hazen said, I think Pixar Pier is going to have a lot of kid elements. I could see them, like if they repurpose the Bugs Land Theater the, from its stuff to be a bug to something Marvel, I could see that kind of fitting in with uh, a more kid-friendly demographic. But as far as attractions go, I, I do agree that it's not going to be nearly as kid-centric as the Bugs Land. I think that's the only criticism I have of a Bugs Land is it's only kid-centric. You know, it's like... There's nothing there that really excites tweens or teens or older. How you know, it's, dare it's really you? It's a place to take your kids. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How <laughs> dare you speak of Heimlich's choo-choo train that way? I, I mean, I like Heimlich, and I've ridden it many times, but, you know. <laughs> you can't beat those licorice seatbelts, dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> or fruit roll-ups, I'm sorry. That's true. And all the smells. Yeah. It is a fun attraction. It's going to be missed, yeah, but it's, it's neat. Marvel. It'll definitely be missed. Yeah. yeah. I Exactly. I don't think it compares. And, you know, unfortunately, you are going to have those Disney traditionalists that still don't like anything that's not actual Disney being in the Disney parks. But <laughs> well, it's Pixar. It's lame, not so Disney. So it doesn't matter. Well, that's true. That's well, true. it wasn't Disney first. <laughs> Right. You know, it's so weird that, you know, with that comment, Gavin, it's odd to me that there's so many people that are so much more against having Marvel in the park than there are people against Star Wars in the park. There's still the same thing. I know a lot of people that are older that still have a problem with Star Wars, Indiana Jones, like all of that being in the parks. They just don't think it belongs. And... I mean, at some point, it's been 30 years that they've been in the parks, so (laughs) you kind of have to get over it at some point and realize they're freaking awesome attractions. They're awesome properties with tons of potential, and uh, you know what they're creating now with their fully themed and immersive experiences and lands, Mm -hmm. it's so incredible. It's great. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to just let go and just – allow the magic to happen and and that's what excites me about this new marvel land expansion because they can make something that is going to blow all of us away and i'm i'm fully confident that they will do that because of what they did in pandora and cars land and what we're seeing develop in star wars land i mean it it blows me away it really does and i and i can't wait to see what they're going to do and I'm I'm really excited. And the timeline seems really fast. So that's yeah. exciting yeah. too. It doesn't seem yeah. like it's, you know, eight years in the future or whatever. It seems like it's right around the corner. Isn't so, it right uh, after um, Galaxy's Edge opens? Mm-hmm. It's They said 2020. Mm-hmm. So we don't know when in 2020, but mm-hmm. still, that's not very far away. You yeah. Know? It, it may open in phases, but still, we're, we're going to get something new by 2020. How upset would you guys be if it was just kind of like an overlay or just <laughs> oh, <laughs> instead of Heimlich, don't, don't. it's going to be you're writing ants for Ant-Man. <laughs> you're like going through. <laughs> oh, dude, I would lose it. I don't yeah. think so. It wouldn't be that long of a closure. <laughs> the only thing no. I'm going to miss from Bugs Land is the four leaf clover. Everything oh, else could go. Yeah. I got some really good pictures on St. Patrick's Day of all the leaf, four leaf clover. Well, of the four leaf clover and the other clovers it was such a beautiful day and then shortly after the news was like a couple days later right what when did it happen oh yeah it was monday just a few days later yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. i was like oh man get all your pictures in now guys that depends did we talk about it last week oh we did did. (laughs) (laughs) okay i've got a question so you know one of the disney parks things is hidden mickeys we know that they love to hide mickey shapes everywhere in the parks and in the resorts Mm -hmm. we know one of the mcu things is stan lee cameos Mm -hmm. how many stan lee cameos are do we think will be hidden within (laughs) marvel land what's gonna be funny is there's gonna be a white guy 
old white guy just coming through. You're like, hey, Stan Lee. What are you talking about, Kate? Get away from me. You're the hidden Stan Lee. Honestly, I'm surprised that we don't have him as part of the videos in Mission Breakout already. Yes, we do. Yeah. No, no, he's like in, in the well, main ride attraction, the... not in the queue. Yeah. Oh, but right. I mean, like in the, the main queue. ride, attra- like in the main uh, <laughs> attraction. Yeah. He falls out. Yeah. You're like, oops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's going to be funny, That'd though. Be awesome. I think every attraction that they do, like there should be some homage to him, right? Like if you're going mm-hmm. through yeah. uh, like Wakanda, let, let's say that science exhibit, right? With, with Shuri or whatever. That when you try to scan your badge or your AP or whatever, it says, Miss Red, you are not Stan Lee or something like that. Or like it shows the wrong picture or something. That's awesome. I think that'd be pretty cool. How about if, um, well, since it's going to be Marvel Land, do you think the characters are just going to be walking around just out and about? I would really. That would be cool. It would be cool, but I would like to see some dedicated meet and greet areas Mm -hmm. for, for Disneyland. I mean, for Disneyland Resort, is what I meant. But if they have if they have characters kind of like uh, the the people of Buena Vista, maybe in Marvel Land they'll have a a Street, Stan a Stanley UPS so driver are we guy. So Mary Jane just walking around? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think. I mean, like Shield agents or something. Yeah, something, around. something. Oh yeah. Uh, I was just like, I was like just trying to tie Trooper. in Stanley. That's what. Yeah, like the Mister in Tomorrowland. <laughs> They could just be cruising around in their shield. I don't watch shield. Do they wear uniforms? I have no idea. Do they have badges? Black suits or something? I don't know. (laughs) Men in black? (laughs) Yeah, something like that. They're going to double up on the costumes from the Empire and then just put a Marvel (laughs) tag on it. (laughs) If all of the cast member... um, What are they called? Do they call them uniforms? No, what do they call them? Costumes. Costumes. Costumes, right? If all of the cast member costumes are Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. suits, that would be awesome. That what? would be. <laughs> I mean, it would have to be something. Something yeah. like that, Yeah. Right? So before we wrap up the episode, if you guys had to bring some kind of themed food or a new dining location, what would you guys bring? <laughs> Um. <laughs> I want the Stark Tower Lounge, and I want to drink a Stark Tini. A Stark Tini. Yeah. For those unfamiliar, that's very close to a Gertini, by the way. <laughs> um, I would like to see a drink called the Infinity Gauntlet, and have Ooh. it have five different alcohols in it um kind of nice. like the zombie if you guys aren't familiar it's five different rums kind of give it its own little you know f- flavor whatnot um it's all flair i think it'd be fun see who could uh conquer it you know <laughs> cool i like it i like it gavin i mean the only thing i thought of was drinks because <laughs> i'm a bit of an alky so the hey, uh, I, I like the, the idea of a startini <laughs> I like the idea of some sort of a strange brew for Doctor Strange. Um, I the, My problem is I don't feel like that area is big enough for both new attractions and new eating venues. I think they might have small like carts or, you know, like maybe something the size of like a Bengal barbecue. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like unless they really want to make it an experience, like a dining experience, kind of like the be our guest thing in uh, Fantasyland in, in uh, Magic Kingdom. If they want to have a whole dining experience, then they could do a restaurant there. And maybe that's what they would use the Bugs Land Theater space for. But I really don't think if they're going to actually build e-ticket type attractions there, that they're going to have a room for much of a restaurant. So I don't know. I... Of course, I feel like they're going to have a themed churro because they always <laughs> freaking do. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I'll be interested to see what food options are going to be there. But I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, even as much as like Cars Land, you know, where they've actually got one sit down restaurant there. But I, I, it's not quite that big. So I just don't think they're going to have the, the space to do it. Yeah. I just really want a Thanos purple churro. 
There you go. A like Thanos a purple breakfast. Flavored churro or something. <laughs> breakfast, yes. Churros for breakfast, but now in Thanos get a, flavor. Get a, Hulk, yeah. get a Hulk green eggs and ham. See? <laughs> that, oh, that's there good. Go. I would definitely try that Stark teeny, though. For sure. Yeah. It's just so cool. Endless possibilities. And that's what I get mm-hmm. excited for. The only thing that I would be excited for was VJ mentioned falafel. Uh, earlier but uh, i would just want shawarma you know it's shawarma is something that shawarma. is not available that's in the had. parks that's yes right. it was shawarma my joke sucked. so <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't recall at the it, after the end credits of the avengers they save the city they want to have a moment to take a breather and they all go out for shawarma and they're just kind of sitting there you know, eating their shawarma. And that is a food that is not available at the Disneyland Resort right now. So I think that if you kind of, like you said, Gavin, like a little bangle barbecue, just a little walk-up restaurant where you can get your food, go sit down, that is a food that I think would fit the Avengers theme, <clears throat> Bobby. And, you know, <laughs> you bring something new to the table. So I'm for it. I, th- I mm-hmm. vote for shawarma. They Who's... could use that little area that they had um, the drinks in uh, the back lot by Monsters. They could? They could. Well, it's oh, right yeah. don't they still yeah. have... Because I, I think AJ mentioned in previous podcasts where um, where they had uh, Flynn's Arcade. Aren't there still yeah. kitchens there? Yeah. But then are well, they going to extend... We don't know how far it's going to go, yeah. exactly. Bugs, we're talking about Bugs Land, but that goes all the way in... You know, Hollywood land. Oh, they're going to oh, take the whole thing eventually. Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> It'll get there. It'll well, spread there. In that case, there. there's so much food that we're going to eat. <laughs> all right. So we're going to post a question for all of you guys. If you are, especially if you're excited about this change and knowing that Bugs Line is leaving, we're getting some more Marvel, the California Adventure. What type of ride would you like to see there? What type of attraction do you think would fit in the area knowing that Bugs Land is going to be no more. And if you want some bonus points, what kind of food would you bring to the area as well? Leave us a comment in the blog post for the episode over at podcasters.com slash 197. Or leave a comment on our Instagram or Facebook post. We'd love to hear what your ideas are. And we could talk about them in a future episode too. So leave a comment. We'll bring them up you know, later on. I think that's going to wrap it, guys. Uh, I think we all had some awesome ideas. Uh, I'll I'll make note of everything. I'll let Bobby know next time we get together for a drink. And, (laughs) you know, we'll let him decide, you know, and uh, I'll I'll let you guys know how it goes right before the opening. Sure. All right, cool. Present him that list and and tell him he could choose whatever he wants. Right, right. I'll give him the list of all my attractions. And then uh, (laughs) we'll go from there. (laughs) Is this going to be before or after our cruise? Uh, it'll have to be before the cruise. You know, he's a busy guy, you know, so I don't, I don't want to take up a lot of his time. But, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let him know what, what we talked about. I'll show him the episode and our list. Nice. <laughs> All right. So before we close up the episode for the day, I want to remind you guys that Podcasters is brought to you by listeners just like you guys. Mentioned it earlier, we like to call those listeners our fairy godparents. Those are the listeners that support us via Patreon. And for as little as $1 a month, you can become a fairy godparent of our podcast as well. But if you provide us with a donation of at least $5 a month, you will also get the exclusive fairy godparent button. We are also working on a few extra perks for our fairy godparents at the moment. Uh, We've been having some conversations. We're looking into other things. And hopefully in the next several months, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that. Of course, our fairy godparents will be the first to know. We'll post exclusive content for them on Patreon as well. So if you guys want a little bit more information about that, head on over to podcasters.com slash FGP. And you'll find a link to sign up and a little bit more information about it there as well. All of our fairy godparents are listed on that page. And if any of them have any type of special project that they're working on, whether it's an Etsy shop or a podcast or any of that sort, all of their names are clickable if they have something available. So you'll be able to go and uh, look at their project, look at their Etsy shop and support them as well like they are supporting us. 
If you shop on Amazon, another great way to help us out is by starting that journey at podcasters.com slash Amazon. On that page, you'll find a large Amazon button. It's actually cartoonishly large. Like it's almost as big as the entire page. You cannot miss it. You can't go there and not see this button. You will see it in your dreams. It's so large. But when you click on it, <laughs> it'll take you to Amazon using our special link. And anything that you purchase may earn us a small commission as a thank you for going through the link. To everyone that's taking the extra few clicks to do that, thank you very much for the added support. We truly appreciate it. Uh, Chalk Walk is coming up in August. It doesn't seem like it, but that time is going to fly. And last year, we were able to raise about $5,000 to help the Children's Hospital of Orange County. This year, we want to try to at least match what we raised last year. Our link is up. If you go to teamboatwilly.com, remember, Willie is not W-I-L-L-Y. It is W-I-L-L-I-E. So it's like Steamboat Willie, like the cartoon, but teamboatwilly.com. There you will find a little bit more information about the team, a link to sign up for Chalk. You will be able to do one of two things. You can either provide a donation to help support the team and help us reach our goal, or you can become part of Team Boat Willie and help us fundraise. The registration fee is $85, but you are able to fundraise that money. So if you don't have the $85, you can have your friends, you know, give you a few bucks here and there. It'll help you raise the 85. It's for a great cause. We had tons of fun last year walking around Disneyland, uh, chanting. The energy is just amazing. After that, we got together and we had breakfast at Tangaroa Terrace. And this year, we're going to do the same thing. So head on over to TeamBoatWilly.com for more information and the registration link if you would like to join us on that day. That's it, right? The winner. The winner, dude. Oh, the Who winner won? of March oh, Mayhem. I'm reminding <laughs> you. Oh, sweet. Man, <laughs> we went. Day. did we go the entire episode without announcing the winner I for March Mayhem? Oh, mm -hmm. man, shame on me. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to announce the winner at the end of the episode. So once you hear the music end, we'll announce the winner just so we can wrap up this podcast. So here's to Beer Shoes and Mickey Ears. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Adios. Ta-ta for them. All right, so now, the moment you have all been waiting for. If you've stuck around this long, thank you guys for listening all the way through. As you guys know, we just recently finished March Mayhem, and as part of the competition, we promised that we were going to give away some kind of prize related to the attraction that won. For everybody that voted all the way through to bring Space Mountain and the Haunted Mansion all the way to the finals, thank you guys very much. Are you guys really, really sad that Space didn't win? Yes, it, it does sting a little. We yeah. could we could have brought home the ring, but you know Maybe next always year. Next year. There's always, always next year. Next year. year. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta but go I out mean... there and give hundred and twenty percent, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if We're gonna... Space Mountain was go good. There no. you go. <laughs> 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 if Space Mountain had to lose, then Haunted Mansion was a worthy opponent to lose too so well I'm, I'm glad you feel that way because gavin's <laughs> still a little salty that pirates didn't <laughs> win <laughs> all right so it's okay during the off season um space mountain's gonna pick up hyperspace and we're gonna come back with a vengeance ghost galaxy True. and all that good stuff right it's gonna it's gonna train in several different modes so we're gonna have to add, we're gonna have to add the layovers to or layovers what yeah it's a plate what are they called? Overlays. Overlays. <laughs> nice. The layovers. I was like, why am I talking about airports? Well, look, Hyperspace so, yeah. Mountain, you're flying through space, right? So maybe there is a lay <laughs> uh, layover. You never know. Yeah, like Star Tours. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> layover at right. Galaxy's Right, you're edge. just trying to make at him feel Disneyland, better. <laughs> at Disneyland, there's a layover at the People Mover. Oh, too soon? Uh, too soon? Still too soon. All right. Too soon, buddy. Oh. Okay. So, uh, like we said, we were going to give away a prize related to the attraction that won, but we didn't mention what it was. We wanted it to be a surprise. So, here is what is part of the prize pack. We're going to be giving away a Haunted Mansion pin with the Hitchhiking Ghost. Uh, this Ooh. is available at 
the Disneyland Resort if you feel like purchasing your own and you happen to like it and you saw it on the Instagram story. You can buy it. it yeah, we didn't create it. Disney did. We are also going to be giving away a print of the Hatbox Ghost. Uh, it's one of my favorite photographs, uh, particularly because I took it. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I know, yes, it's very biased of me, but I really love that photograph. It is a great picture. Thank you. And it's the same photograph that we ended up auctioning off uh, when we were trying to raise money last year as part of one of the Team Boat Willie events for cancer research. So you guys may already be familiar with the print. Plus, we are also going to be giving away a print of Gavin's spook stock print that he did for the Foolish Mortals show at Pop Comics last year. A Say what? I know, right? Oh, wait. There's, There's more. more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last thing that we're going to be giving away is you can't forget the fact that the mansion gets a tiny little overlay called Nightmare Before Christmas one quarter of the year, right? So as part of the prize pack, we are also going to be giving away the Pumpkin King Vinylmation. Uh, it's an awesome collectible. Uh, I've seen it. I'm a little jealous because I don't own this one. And I know Melissa wanted one, too. So there it is. <laughs> you guys get four items as part of this prize pack. We have entered everybody's name into a handy dandy app on our phone, which is going to randomly select a winner. AJ is going to read it out loud. And good luck to everybody. Here we go. You guys ready? <laughs> the suspense. The suspense. Here we go. It's killing me. I hope I say this name right. Oh, I know. Oh, man. That's, that's I always what I name. worry about, right? That's <laughs> always what I worry about. Okay. Here we go. And the lucky winner is Christina.j.sales. Woo! You're the winner! Yay! Yay. I, I really Wait, hope we said that, that name so correctly. I, I'm glad AJ <laughs> did it and not me, because I know I would have mangled it. That's why it. you made us say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, thought you were gonna, I thought we were going to do it. And the winner is La La Land. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh too soon. It, it's okay. It's all right. We can edit that in. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, well, congratulations, Christina. We are going to be contacting you via Instagram. You can go ahead and just text us back your uh, shipping address and all that good stuff. Thank you again to everybody that participated. And until the next giveaway, here is to Beer Shoes and Mickey Ears one more time. See you guys next week. See ya. Bye. Enjoy the pod. Cast. Cast. <laughs>